I was really hesitant on talking about this, but a lot of you guys wanted to at least address it. Plus, the conversation now involves a lot of K-pop idols we know, like Jackson, or a little more indirectly, like Lisa. The reason I was hesitant is because these accusations are about much more than just K-pop. It's about human lives. It's about possible discrimination and violation of human rights. I am not qualified to elaborate on the intricate details of what is currently going on, but I will do my best to briefly, briefly explain so you have at least a basic understanding and a starting point for your own research, which I highly recommend. As always, let me know about any corrections I need to make or anything I'm missing, because to comprehend the complicated conversations surrounding the K-pop idols involved, we have to take a step back and see the bigger picture. China's government has been facing global accusations of committing serious human rights violations against certain minority groups, certain Muslim groups within a region in China. Allegations that these people are being forced into labor and much much worse beyond that. Because of the global reaction toward China due to these allegations, a bunch of big brands have voiced their concern calling for reduced exposure or even a ban on cotton from China or at least from this specific region. Because brands are distancing themselves, many citizens of China are standing by their country and boycotting these brands in their eyes for spreading or perpetuating false information about China. And at least on the surface, so are a lot of celebrities, including some Chinese K-pop idols. Now, I'll address what could be happening underneath the surface in a bit. But for example, FX's Victoria stepped down as a model of H&M. The statement from her label said something along the lines of the country's interests are more important and that they are counteracting the businesses and attempts to slander the country and its citizens. You can see how this looks from the outside and why people would be disappointed with Victoria. China is accused of something horrible. H&M stands against these allegations of violations of human rights. And then Victoria steps away from H&M. Same situation regarding EXO's lay with Calvin Klein and Converse, the person people seem to be discussing most is Jackson. It's the same thing with Lay and Victoria though. Adidas is one of the companies that spoke up and is no longer using cotton from that region in China. Jackson's Weibo account then announces that Jackson will be cutting ties with Adidas and that the country's interests are most important. Again, you can see how that looks from an optics perspective. By the way, this is where the Lisa articles come in. Lisa has obviously been gaining a lot of popularity in China for her coaching role in Youth With You. Recently, she was featured in Harper Bazaar's magazine in China. However, those pictures have now been taken down. And the assumption is because Lisa, as well as the other Blackpink members, are tied with Adidas. How do people in China view Lisa right now? I don't know. Now, you guys may have noticed that it seems like a lot of these statements are saying the same thing, that they are cutting ties with a certain brand because the country's interests are above everything else. Almost like it's following the same format. This detail has not been lost on people. When I asked you guys on Instagram to get a taste of the spectrum of opinions on this, many of you guys, including some Muslim viewers, said you don't think Jackson and Victoria actually support what's going on. But they may have done this because if they were to go against the Chinese government, that would mean putting not just themselves, but their families in danger. I saw a lot of these reactions that with the way things work in China and how much power the government has, they are basically being forced to do and say this. Not just to keep their businesses and careers alive, but themselves and their loved ones. That being said, you have people who do acknowledge this, but still don't think it's right. Or argue that is only an assumption or justification. You have people who don't know what to think, but can't help but be disappointed at these artists. You have people who are straight up angry, appalled, and no longer support these idols. So now I throw it over to you guys watching this. Let me know your thoughts, your perspectives. Let me know if I'm leaving out any significant information that needs to be considered. I'll always try to update the pinned comment with any missing or incorrect info. This also goes for the next topic, and that's regarding Wu Jin. Now, I know there are many opinions regarding Wu Jin, but there are also new updates that are important to discuss. Last year, accusations were made against Wu Jin, and it blew up. It was then revealed that he signed with a company, 10X Entertainment, who denied all allegations, which a lot of people thought was a made-up company at the time. Since then, however, the company has worked with authorities and is taking legal action against those who spread malicious information information about Wu Jin. Apparently, it seems as though the person that initially accused them was from Brazil and that she admitted to making things up. If you guys know where I can get more details on this, please let me know. Again, I went on Instagram to see if your position or views of Wu Jin have changed at all with this new information. And there were many who said they do support, that there is no evidence against him and that even though the situation wasn't handled the best way initially, the hate he got online was and is absolutely terrible, something he addressed 
addressed on an Instagram Live. You have those who acknowledge the accusations were false, but don't support him due to his departure from Stray Kids and JYP. That there is quote, something suspicious about how all that went down. How Stray Kids allegedly react to it, and it rubbed them the wrong way that he apparently released his fandom name on Stray Kids anniversary. Then you have those who are neutral. That they acknowledge the accusations were false, they don't think anything of his departure from Stray Kids, they don't support, they don't hate. Once again, I turn this to you. Have your opinions changed at all with all the additional information? I think whatever your views are, hating on anyone, sending them malicious comments or threats online is never ever the way to go. You never know what people are going through mentally and you never know what people are going through physically. I can't believe Baekhyun was able to go this many years working as an idol and being in the public eye all while probably being in so much pain. For those who don't know, Baekhyun just announced that he will be enlisting on his birthday in May. With that statement, it was also announced, however, that he would be serving as a social service worker. This apparently got him some backlash from people because the South Korean public is said to value active duty over public service. Here's the kicker. But then Dispatch came out and said the reason for him serving as a social service worker is because of legitimate medical reasons, more specifically hypothyroidism. Baekhyun submitted his records last year and the severity of his condition actually placed him on the last rung of health grading. If you guys have had or know anybody with thyroid problems, it is not good. Baekhyun later released a message to his fans saying he was the one who told Dispatch and let them release the info. Fans then discovered vlogs in the past where you could spot his medication, instances where he referenced the medication and jokingly said, oops, I meant vitamins. Like I said, you never know what people are going through. It looks like he's staying positive about everything though. And you know what? I want to turn up the positivity on this heavier video so far. You know, talk about things like Pledis announcing everything has been cleared up for Mingyu and he'll now resume activities on his birthday. Cosmic Girls winning number one for a natural. Let's talk about things like Hwasa being confirmed to have renewed her contract, which makes it three out of four Mamamoo members so far. RBW did say they were still in talks with Wee In regarding her contract, and I wouldn't be too worried about that. I think it's brilliant of Wee In to not renew yet. Think about it. She's about to have her solo. What better way to make sure RBW handles everything to the best of their abilities than to say, hey, let's talk after my solo promotions. She's a genius, man. Another amazing thing is Laboom starting to get more buzz Brave Girl style. And better yet, it's with the song that made me fall in love with them years ago, Journey to Atlantis. Even the name of the song is awesome. I can't wait to talk about them more. Please start promoting it again. Another thing is a lot of you guys have messaged me asking, hey, are all of these groups label mates with Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande now? Are Jungkook and Justin Bieber going to be eating together in one of those new high building rooms they showed off? Okay, if some of you are reacting like, Right now, let's explain. It dropped this week, and I've seen both words used, that HYBE merged slash acquired Ithaca Holdings. Is that how you say it? Ithaca Holdings is a company founded by Scooter Braun, who manages people like Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, Demi Lovato. Scooter Braun is now joining the board of HYBE as well, which a lot of fans are not too happy about. Many people don't like Scooter because of his alleged shady business dealings in the past, controversy regarding Taylor Swift. Fans don't want someone like that to have any kind of say when it comes to BTS, 17, TXT, G-Friend, and so on. So if you're confused or worried about the structure of all of this, let's break it down. HYBE, headed by Bang Shi Hyuk, is the parent company to everything. HYBE Labels is what is over big hit music, which is BTS, TXT. HYBE Labels is also over Source, Pledis, Zico's company. Ithaca Holdings is way over here under the HYBE America side. They are all under HYBE technically, but also remember that labels and management don't really work the same way in America. According to this, while Ariana and Bieber are both under SB Projects, Bieber is with Def Jam and Ariana is with Republic Records, who twice is connected to as well, by the way. So the answer to the question of are they label mates is 